There's no stopping technology when it comes to adding smarts. We've got Alexa-enabled kettles and coffee makers, smart water bottles, and taps you can talk to. The latest smart kitchen device takes the iconic stand mixer and adds tech. Meet the GE Profile Smart Stand Mixer. With a built-in scale, sensing abilities, and an app that can automate your baking, plus the option of voice control, this new baking genius takes the smart kitchen from simmer to rolling boil. I recently had the chance to be one of the first reviewers to get hands-on with this mixer for an extended period of time and to be able to try it out in my own home kitchen. I'm Erin from Tech Gadgets Canada and Tech Gadgets International, and in this review I'll test its features, try several of the automated recipes, and I'll compare it to the power of a regular stand mixer. I'll wrap things up by letting you know if I think this smart kitchen device is a good investment for you. And really heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, to please hit that like button and consider becoming a subscriber, since both those things do help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. There are a couple of components that make this mixer stand out from the rest of the crowd, mainly that it connects to a companion app which can assist with several additional smart functions, including weighing what's in the bowl and even sensing the torque from the mixing head and adjusting its mixing power accordingly. The GE Profile Smart Mixer's 11-speed motor can tell the difference between mixing cake batter, kneading dough, and whipping cream, for example, by sensing the resistance in the bowl. What GE calls auto-sense technology then kicks in, controlling the motor's torque and speed, supposedly creating the perfect texture for your recipe. It can also automatically stop when the dough reaches the perfect firmness to prevent overmixing, a common mistake that can ruin a recipe. The first thing I'm going to say about this mixer is that it's astonishingly heavy. The box is all but impossible for one person to move on their own since the package weighs over 53 pounds. Unpacking was a legitimate challenge, not that I'm taking points off the score for that. When you unbox the mixer, you'll be able to see its parts. You'll get the weighty mixer motor, a stainless steel bowl with handle, a pouring spout or mixing shield, and three attachments including an 11 wire whisk, a batter beater, and a dough hook. Getting the bowl seated in the mixer is a bit different than other mixers I've tried. Two angled levers poke out from underneath the C-shaped mixing bowl seat. Push your thumbs on both at the same time and push down to release the bowl. Conversely, pushing them up and clicking them into place will hold the bowl in place. Next up, you'll need to pair your GE Profile Smart Mixer with your home's Wi-Fi network, and for that, you need the GE Smart HQ app. Log into or create an account, then plug your mixer in to begin the pairing process. The app will walk you through the steps, and I was connected in just a few clicks. Using the app and the wireless connectivity, you can now cook using guided or auto-sense recipes. Guided recipes are recipes that are provided step by step for you to get the most out of your mixer. The app will guide you through each of the steps and help out by doing things like taking weights of certain ingredients. Auto sense recipes are recipes where the mixer is able to monitor and detect changes in the viscosity of your batter or your dough using a measurement of the motor's torque. And that feedback is used to optimize the mixing, whipping, or emulsifying so that you can, in theory, have perfect results every time. You can operate the mixer in two ways. The first is on the mixer itself by using the LED lighted dial and the small screen, which lets you select speeds and see what's going on. The other way is to control it with your smartphone, though this is actually not as autonomous as it might seem. For example, while you can set the speed you want and the time or the duration of your mixing, once you tap start on your phone's app screen here, you still need to go to the mixer itself and touch the start button on top of the machine for the commands to take effect. The mixer is not completely autonomous. You can imagine this is a bit of a safety feature. Connecting the attachments is easy. They all simply push up and lock into place. Then to remove them, just push the ring holding them in place down. I'm going to touch on something briefly here because I actually think it's kind of important if you're considering this mixer. As I mentioned previously, possibly a couple of times, the mixer is extraordinarily heavy. It weighs about 50 pounds, which means if you're the type of person who stores your mixer in another location outside the kitchen and you break it out when you need it, that could very well be a problem. I consider myself to be a reasonably strong and fit person, but it is a serious struggle to move this mixer around my kitchen. For me, this mixer is best suited to being placed in one location in your kitchen and left there forever. 
I had this mixer for about two weeks and I used it to make almost a dozen recipes. In some cases, I just used my own recipes, while in others, I chose to use both GE's Guided and its AutoSense recipes. I started with GE's cinnamon bun recipe, which uses a Japanese milk bread style dough, and I'm a big fan of this technique. The mixer absolutely made making homemade cinnamon buns a breeze. The recipe is solid, the technique and the instructions were flawless, and I was blown away by the finished product. Next up was GE's one minute aioli, which was indeed fast. While I might be inclined to tweak the seasonings a bit, a little more lemon and garlic, the technique worked flawlessly and I had thick, creamy, fresh made mayonnaise for burger night. For a dinner party, I decided to use another of GE's guided recipes. The ingredients for the potato and herb bun recipe seemed a bit unusual, including both instant mashed potato flakes and skim milk powder but the result was really tasty and wonderfully tender bread. The GE Profile Smart Mixer also made a pavlova that wowed dinner guests one evening. Making a crispy yet creamy pavlova can be a delicate art and using the GE guided recipe where each step was timed and the mixer would stop automatically when it was done certain steps made it so easy and resulted in a showstopper of a dessert. This mixer can also integrate with Google Assistant and Alexa for hands-free control using just your voice. Now I chose to go with Alexa and it was easy to get set up using the Alexa app and linking the GE Smart HQ skill. Turn stand mixer on. When it comes to actually using the voice control. Stand mixer is in a mode that doesn't accept requests. Please change its mode in the app or on the device. Not as helpful as you might think. For example, you can't just ask Alexa to start the mixer. You need to be in the right mode, and that means you're already using remote control via the app or a guided recipe. Here's what that means. If you use the app to start the mixer, you can ask Alexa to stop it. But because, as I mentioned earlier, starting movement on the mixer needs to be done manually by pushing that button on top, the voice control seems to be pretty limited. And to be honest, it takes a lot more time to say, hey, hey, turn stand mixer off than it does just to press the button to stop it. I was able to get Alexa to enact timed controls though by saying things like turn the mixer off in two minutes. Okay, I'll turn off the stand mixer in two minutes. But when I asked her to adjust the speed, she'd say stand mixer isn't in a mode that accepts requests. Bottom line here, the smart voice control integration works, but I don't think it's really worth it since it seems to take longer and you're not going to know when it's going to work and when it won't. I'm going to take a sec here to talk about the usefulness of the AutoSense recipes. During my testing, there were only three of them available in the GE app for homemade butter, French meringue cookies, and how to cream butter and sugar for baking. I opted to make fresh butter from heavy cream. This recipe is maybe a bit of a strange choice since butter is actually really easy to make without any technology necessary. It's really just a lot of whipping for a long time. So yeah, it made butter from cream, but it didn't feel like much of a feat. Particularly at the price point this mixer is at, I was expecting more recipes and more assistance from the app, if I'm being honest. This is a brand new to the market product, so I trust more will be coming, but for the sake of new users, I hope it's soon. When it comes to the cleanup, all of the parts and accessories of this mixer are dishwasher safe, or you can hand wash them in the sink. The stand mixer body can be wiped clean with a damp soapy cloth. I use my old workhorse KitchenAid stand mixer at least a few times a week, and I love it because it can handle tedious and tiring mixing and whipping chores easily for me, which entices me to bake things like breads and cakes at home. So is adding smarts to a stand mixer worth it? Adding a built-in scale, torque sensing, and automatic timing features, as well as guided recipes I actually looked forward to making again, and that GE cinnamon bun recipe baked up three times in my two weeks with my loner mixer here. For me, that shows that this device definitely has promise for serious home bakers. Overall, I think it absolutely delivers on its promises of adding meaningful smarts to a kitchen stalwart. When it comes to the downsides, there aren't currently a lot of automated recipes available in the app yet, but hopefully GE will be growing its database quickly. The other major downside for me was that this mixer is far too big and heavy to move easily around the kitchen. You should absolutely find a place for it to live for all of eternity on your countertop, since storing it away and having to lug it out will likely make you not want to use it. In short, I found the GE Profile Stand Mixer does make baking easier and it gives more reliable results. I can definitely recommend it if you're a regular baker looking for a stand mixer that can do more than average. But with one caveat, 
It is quite expensive at $9.99 US, even when compared to a large capacity KitchenAid Pro version at $5.49 to $6.79. This version, by the way, is only available at Crate and Barrel. If you're not sure you need all this technology or maybe your budget's a little less spendy, check out what happened when I tried a $99 stand mixer or see what it's like using a classic KitchenAid stand mixer right now.